Eric Metaxas was a keynote speaker at the Illinois Family Institute's 2023 Faith, Family, and Freedom Banquet in Bolingbrook. The broadcaster and author of Letter to the American Church, as well as other critically acclaimed books, also took time for a conversation with IFI. Here's part of what we discussed. Eric, when you see what's happening in the world today, does it cause you to look up in anticipation of Christ's return? You know, funny you should say that, because the answer would be yes. Uh, There's no doubt about it. The only question uh, is the timing, but... I, anybody who's lived long enough uh, recognizes that what we're going through right now is unprecedented. This is not, you know, history has its uh, curves and bends, and, and it always has. But people who are paying attention realizes that we're, we realize, I think, that we're at a moment like we've never seen before. Um, I The, the book, uh, Letter to the American Church, I... I don't really get into that, but I, I wrote a sequel to it, which will which will be out very soon, called Religionless Christianity, God's Answer to Evil. And that's a Bonhoeffer phrase, which I won't get into right now. But in that book, uh, I could not help but ask the question, are we in the last days? And it seems that we are uh, living in the last days. The, 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 the question is in the details. The question is, what does it mean for the church? What are we to do? Uh, what are we to expect? But I, I don't, I don't see how you get around it. Uh, that 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 is the case. The only question, as I say, is the details. What can Christians and their pastors do to counter the anti-Semitism in America? Looking back to Nazi Germany, this is a scary time. Yeah. Well, I mean. What can we do? We can condemn it uh, in 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 the loudest, strongest way possible. Uh, th- there's nothing to say. Anti-Semitism has always been from the pit of hell. Uh, the reason the Jews have been uh, extraordinarily hated is because they are God's chosen people. They're marked by God, and it is a hatred of God. It's a demonic hatred of God that expresses itself as a hatred of his people. It's utterly irrational, um, and uh, it's something that you see. I mean, I, I, I think it's true that all different kinds of people hate the Jews, and you think, well, why would that be? What do they have in common? The, the, the source of that hatred is, is, is an animus against God, uh, and, and I think that we have to be really, really clear that uh, we we stand against it and we will not be sucked into, you know, silly arguments like, well, you know, well, but what about the Palestinian children? As though we would ever say, oh, that we don't care. Uh, of course, I mean, it, it's it, it's it's people are playing games when they when they talk about that because I mean, I think that, you know, uh, the anybody in the West, uh, the United States, Israel always cares, has to care about, um, you know, h- how we uh, treat the other side in a war. But uh, when people talk about it as though there's some moral equivalence, what happened on October 7th is mind-blowing. It would, it would be like saying, you know, uh, everybody came and they, they killed and raped your family, but hey, don't, don't be full of hate, don't, don't react. And you'd say, well, wait a minute, what, what, what do you, why are you saying that? The most normal thing is to find the people who did this and make sure they don't do it to other people. That's the first thing. Uh, and that's, um, so, so we're, a lot of the PR that's going on right now, this PR battle, it's really horrific. And I think, you know, most people see what is, see what is happening. Uh, that's my sense. Well, from your biblical worldview, yeah. what happens to America if we turn our backs on Israel. If you turn your back on Israel, God will curse you. Not a good thing in case you're scoring at home. Uh, There is no doubt that one of the reasons America has been strong and has flourished is because of our support of of Israel. 
Um, and I think that to the extent that anybody uh, turns uh, their back on the Jews and Israel uh, or stands less strongly, I think God's judgment inevitably falls. And I, and I think that, uh, you know, you see that whether you're talking about the Obama administration, but anybody that is, um, is not clearly standing with Israel, uh, I, I, I think it's just a spiritual reality um, that, uh, that plays itself out. And so I don't, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with the current administration, but um, obviously I, I hope that we have an administration in the near future that stands very strongly with Israel. It's vital. You're not a doom and gloom guy. Why do you have hope no. for Illinois and America? Well, I mean, first of all, um, you know, despair is a sin. If you are, uh, if you are someone who worships the God of the Bible, um, you really have no excuse to be uh, gloomy. Uh, no matter how bad things get, the Scripture calls us to rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, if you're not doing that, you're sinning. We're supposed to rejoice in the Lord always. If you're going to a church that doesn't teach that, you know, again, find another church because we are supposed to be people of joy even in the midst of difficulty. And so I think that's central. Even if things aren't going well, even if things are bad, we're supposed to look different. We're supposed to, because our joy is in God and that's real. That's not just something we tell ourselves. Um, but I also think that, frankly, if... God's church will fight if God's church will understand that this is our moment to fight, uh, to be brave. God will give us the victory. In other words, I'm not somebody who says it's over. There's nothing we can do. I frankly do not believe that. I think that's the, the voice of the enemy. As I said earlier, I think that that is, you hear a lot of Christians say it and it is giving voice to the will of the devil, not giving God's will is that we would fight that we would not go down the path the German church did, that we would stand up and be the church and understand the, the, how crucial this hour is, that we don't have tomorrow and next week. This is the hour now to fight. But I honestly believe that uh, if, if God's people, it's his remnant really, will, will fight and stand. Uh, I, I think we have no idea what uh, wonderful things may lay ahead. So I am cautiously optimistic. I don't just say that. I actually believe I have enough signs from what I see of hope that uh, now is not the time to say, oh, it's over, because it simply isn't. You brought up your new book. When's it coming out? In April. It's a sequel to Letter to the American Church. Letter to the American Church, of course, talks about the parallels of what happened in Germany to what's happening right now, which I think are inescapable. Uh, and why the church needs to be the church and needs to reject the lie that we're supposed to avoid politics and supposed to avoid all these things. That, that's simply a lie. The new book just takes it really to the next level. It's called Religionless Christianity. It's a phrase of Bonhoeffer's where he was talking about real Christianity as opposed to dead religion. And there's a lot of us who, you know, go to churches where it's a lot of religiosity and it's really not alive. And Bonhoeffer said if the German church had really been the church we could have withstood we could have stood against the evil of the nazis and and i know that that's true that the german church had the power culturally that they could have stood against the nazis and they didn't the same is true of the american church today that if it would be the church it has the power to stand against all these evils and i think we would we'll, we will see amazing things the question is will enough people wake up in time and whoever's listening to this i'm talking to you once again how can people connect with eric metaxas well, if, the best thing is to go to my website. I mean, I'm all over social media, but ericmetaxas.com. Uh, if you sign up for my newsletter once a week, I send out all the interviews, video interviews I do with just some spectacular guests that I would be really thrilled for people to get a chance to, uh, to hear. So uh, just ericmetaxas.com. All right. Thank you so much, Eric Metaxas. God bless. My, my privilege. Thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Author and broadcaster Eric Metaxas, the keynote speaker at the Illinois Family Institute's 2023 Faith, Family, and Freedom Banquet in Bolingbrook. Please support the work of IFI. All donations are tax deductible. And during December, donations will be matched dollar for dollar up to $100,000. If you'd like to give, click donate at IllinoisFamily.org. IllinoisFamily.org. Thank you.